Okay, we're in the Crossville stand. We're at Greenville 2011. We're in Toronto, and we're with Heidi Vassilotti. So anybody that watches this knows that that's probably the first time I've ever actually gotten a complicated name pronounced correctly the first time. You got it right the first time. So, son of a gun. And I, well wasn't done. Even, I wasn't hired. Anyway, anyway <laughs> we're in a Crossville stand, and I guess the story here is the recycling program, which it seems to me is most unique in the ceramic business. Tell us about it. It is. We're actually the only, only manufacturing company in the world who has certified our entire process. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So we started off by simply just having our product lines individually being third party certified. And then as we've expanded this sustainable movement, we've now moved into certifying the entire process. The great part about that is it allows us to, rather than just to work with an individual line, we can now put recycled content into all of our lines. And we've taken this, we've taken two steps, two giant steps forward in doing this. The first one was the introduction of our tile take-back program, where we are, the, again, the only manufacturer to actually create the technology that's required to actually break down fired porcelain material. So we can now take our own fired waste, as well as fired waste from an existing project site, crush that down, and make it into new tile. So that moved us ahead tremendously. And then we advanced even further when we realized that we could expand that not only to tile products, but we could open it up to other porcelain products, i.e. porcelain fixtures, such as your toilets, your sinks, etc. So we've now created a partnership with Toto, the luxury plumbing company, that allows us to be able to take their seconds, what would normally have gone into a landfill, and we can crush those materials and make them into porcelain tile, which is fantastic because now that puts us in the position that we're towards our goal, which is becoming a net consumer of waste. When you crush this, how, fi how fine do you crush it? We crush it down to a fine, usable powder. It goes through a couple of states, but in the end, it winds up becoming a fine, usable powder that we integrate in with our other clays. What, what percentage of this reuse or of this post-industrial product, I guess, mm -hmm ends up in the finished product? It ranges, depending on the product line, but a bare minimum, the sign says right now 4%. We've already increased that to 5.5% over the past few months, and we anticipate continuing to increase that. So at least 5.5% across all of our product lines. And then there are others where we have stated higher amounts, such as 20 or 40%. Now, the characteristics of the finished product, does that change at all? No, it doesn't change anything in terms of the integrity of the porcelain itself. What kind of response have you gotten to that here at this show? Oh, it's been tremendous, absolutely tremendous. It's one thing that the design community and architects alike have asked over and over again is to open up the selection, the design palette, and the choices that they have that are being offered with recycled content. And not just recycled content, but certified recycled content. Now, one of the things I guess I've learned at this show, it seems to me overall, the whole sustainability idea, if it doesn't end up at some point or another... As a, as a positive situation at the bottom line, it doesn't work. Now, um, that would mean that you can recover some of this stuff from Toto mm -hmm. at a reasonable cost. Mm -hmm. Is that the case? That is the case. Absolutely. Absolutely. The agreement with Toto allows them to be able to sell their seconds, send their seconds, rather, to us, which is a great option for them rather than them putting it back into the waste stream. So you just pay, pay the freight. What do you see down the road? Is there a way to expand this, you know, this idea? I mean, I don't know. I guess a lot of post-consumer ceramic ends up in landfills, but I guess that's not, that's not that bad, is it? I mean, it came from the earth and dust to dust and all that, huh? Well, potentially it's actually quite bad it's because materials such as porcelain tile or porcelain fixtures, their life cycles can go as high as 100 years. So it is the preference to actually be able to recycle, be able to recycle those materials, including post-consumer. So what this has done for, this, for us is it allows us to be able to not only take in the existing floors and recycle those, but in, theor in theory we can also take used fixtures and recycle those as well. So down the road, do you see the potential for recycling post-consumer product of all types on a, on a large scale? Absolutely. I think we have the capability of doing so. There are other models, I suspect. I know Carpet has a model, been in that for 10 years. And that, that, that's most interesting. I have to imagine you're, you're getting a really good play from, um, from players here. 
Absolutely. As with everything, though, it's a bit of a learning process. And it's also a bit of a grassroots process to tell people that this capability is out there, being that we're the only ones in the, in the entire world who are doing this. It's a matter of being able to put the message out there. Now, now tell me how the process works. As I see it, the building owner, the property owner, says, you know, we'd really like to do things that are sustainable with this, even if we don't get a LEED certification. He says that to the architect, and then the architect would come to you and say, well, I can have ceramic that has this particular story or another. Is that the way it works, and is that the process that, if it doesn't start here, at least it's furthered here? Mm -hmm. No, you're absolutely right. It's either introduced by the owner and or the architect, but although I have found some very interesting cases where there are demolition um, practices out there that just naturally are taking materials and sending them to be crushed to be used as aggregate. So it's kind of a holistic movement, if you will. The... The process can take a few, different, a few different ways. It could just be owner-driven, where they're asking to say, this is what I would like to have done with it. And then the architect speaks with the manufacturer about their capabilities and can they do this. Or it could be lead-driven. I was just um, looking at some statistics today that actually said 40% of the materials that go in a landfill come from construction waste debris. By being able to take the floors and the fixtures, et cetera, and have those being recycled. That's a huge potential contribution to construction waste management diversion. So, so when I talk to you next year or the year after, I'm going to make you do, do this again, <laughs> um, you may have had a program because there will be more and more people looking for something to do with the waste they accumulate. Absolutely. Crossville sustainable practices have been growing by leaps and bounds. Like I said, two years ago, we just came with the introduction of being able to crush it, and now look where we've taken it, to becoming a net consumer of waste. One question I should have asked you earlier. In terms of the finished product, yes. can you tell if a product has this recycled content in it or not? Nope. There's no visible difference between the two. And are there specific products that you're offering that do have this content? All of our product lines. All of, your product. All of our product lines, yes. Yeah. How, how's the show been for you so far? This is the first day halfway through the afternoon. So how's it been so far? It's been wonderful. Great traffic, great feedback. It's been excellent. Heidi, thanks a lot. No you did wonderfully. You know did that. I? Yes, you, 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 you did. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to cheat again here with this. Okay. Heidi Vassilotti, we're with, and I just see the, the man over here, he's going to throw something at me. <laughs> And uh, we're at uh, Greenville 2011. We're in a Crossville stand, and this is Top Floor TV.